Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, two promo codes to be aware of. BiteSquad.com. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. And go to SodaStick.com, the great local apparel company. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any sized order. Roy, we try to be the voices of experience and sometimes the voices of calm during these difficult, long baseball seasons. But, you know, if you, if you want to panic, now's a good time to panic, I would say. Uh, <laughs> twins, are, twins are, are the, their health is, has been devastated. Uh, they're in a bit of a slump. Their outfield defense is shot. Uh, t- Byron Buxton's out for the season now. Adrian's is out for the season. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, if panic's your thing, you know, this is a pretty good time for it. No, I think you ought to wait and see if they get swept in Cleveland and it's down that leads down to a half a game uh with uh thirteen games left and, and then and then absolutely set your hair on fire at that point. I mean if we're gonna panic, let's let's wait until there's uh until we've got uh, the the most the most dire looking of consequences. We're talking here on Friday morning. Of course, the twins are now in Cleveland preparing for a big three game series at Cleveland with a three and a half game lead uh, and probably having to go to some kind of a bullpen game on Saturday. So they're up against it now. Uh, and as Roy said, we get a point now where, you know, sports are so much and sports fandom is so much about emotion, but it's, it's really just math at this point. You know, if the twins need to finish one game better than Cleveland in the standings, they could do that in a number of different ways. Of course, if they sweep this weekend, it's probably over. They win two out of three. It might even be pretty much over. They win one out of three. It's still interesting. They get swept. You know what? Here's the thing. Again, it's math. If they get swept, they could still win the division. It just would just it would just set some people, as you said, set some people's hair on fire. Well, yeah. I mean, let's let's talk about the math. I mean, since you bring it up, let's just talk about what it is. Let's assume that uh, the Twins get swept in Cleveland and it's down to a half a game. The reason it's a half a game is because Cleveland's played one more game with the Twins. After Sunday, at Sunday night, uh, the Twins will have 13 games left, and the Indians will have 12. So uh, it, it, it's for one game, uh, absolutely, literally, for one game, uh, that the Twins are totally in control of making it go to even or one game up with each of the each of them having the 12 games left those those 13 games that the twins have left are with chicago detroit and kansas city the 12 games that cleveland has left uh, are, uh six of them are three with the phillies who are still in the wild card hunt and they finish at the washington nationals uh, with three games there. So uh, this is the, the time in the schedule that we were, uh, that we'd been uh, talking about for a while. And I- the twins will leave Cleveland with, uh, it, either a, a slight lead or a big lead or, or an in-between lead. And then they will be in their own hands to, uh, do what they're supposed to do and, and, and finish off the, the lower division, uh, lesser clubs. If they can't do that for whatever reason, then you know they don't deserve to. They don't deserve to win the division. Now the caveat to that, the asterisk to that is, man, are they have they suffered through some real uh, misfortune? Cleveland's had, had injuries. You know, I get that, um, but uh, and that is that is true. And and Cleveland would be a much better club uh, with with all their guys healthy, but. They also went out and got a couple of guys in Reyes and Puig, um, so it, it, it's not as uh, as big a big of a deal as as it was. Twins are without uh, you know uh, so many of their guns. I mean, now no more Michael Pineda, who's who was pitching better than anybody else, and um, they're you know without Kepler uh, in the lineup, uh, and uh, and without Cave in the lineup. You know, not to say not even to mention Buxton. 
I mean, that's a big deal. So no, I mean, they, they've been running out there with guys either playing hurt or un, unable to play because of hurt. And you know, the, the last 13 games of the season, regardless of Cleveland, the last 13 games of the season are still going to depend on whether they can get these guys healthy. I mean, it, there's, it, and, and get them, get them playing the way they, they were playing before. There's there. I mean, that's, that's going to be the whole deal. It's not about, it's not even about this Cleveland series. It's not even about uh, whether or not they can step up and beat these lesser teams. It's about getting their, their, you know, number one starters healthy and back on the field. And I want to talk about the notion of curses in sports because this certainly feels like a cursed franchise in some ways. I wrote about that the other day and talked to Justin Morneau about it. I do want to introduce the show. Uh, we kind of rolled right into things. This is Roy Smalley's Chin Music. This is our baseball show on TalkNorth.com. You can subscribe to your favorite podcast app or you can just go to TalkNorth.com or just wait for the uh, social media uh, links and, and listen there. Uh, appreciate everybody who listens to all the shows across the network. Thanks to our sponsors, Berry Coffee, BerryCoffee.com. I'm drinking a Bull Run Road as we do the show, uh, which is my favorite. Well, it's been my favorite coffee. Uh, the French roast is kind of pulled into a tie for first now, but it's great stuff. Tony Hogman, your State Farm agent in Champlain. They have a special deal I'll tell you about here in a second. And, of course, Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, promo code TALKNORTH, or go to BiteSquad.com, and they have some special deals depending on where you happen to live. So I talked to Morneau about it the other day. So, you know, we could go deep into – Twins cursed them, which is Tony Oliva, you know, blowing out his knee and ruining what might have been one of the greatest careers in baseball history. Uh, Kirby Puckett waking up blind one day in spring training. Uh, you know, Kent Herbeck not being able to keep his body together. Uh, what could, you know, what what looked like it might be a Hall of Fame career early in his career. I mean, there there have been there's been some misfortune, but really, if you just look at playoffs of recent vintage, 2004 they play without Joe Mauer. 2006, they go without Francisco Liriano. 2009 and 2010, they do it without Justin Morneau. 2017, they do it without Miguel Sano. This year, they're definitely going to be doing it without Buxton. Uh, that That is, you know, whether or not you believe in actual curses, that is some serious misfortune. Serious misfortune. There's there's no there's no question about it. And, you know, every team, I, I imagine if you went through every team, and they, they would have a litany of things that um, that they would be, uh, equally uh, disappointed uh, in, but uh, all the things you mentioned, um, are, it's a pretty big and important list. There's no, there's no question about it. And I don't, I won't say it's unprecedented by any, by any stretch, but it is, uh, I think in the, in the list of, uh, of, of bad luck, uh, it's that the twins is, is fairly significant. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the fascinating thing, is that we spent so much of the year talking about bullpen problems, possible bullpen fixes, bullpen acquisitions, bullpen call-ups. And right now the bullpen might be the strength of the team because at least they have a lot of healthy bodies out there that can contribute. You know, for most of the year, this team's strength was depth, uh, lineup depth, and outfield defense. And, you know, having a healthy starting five in the rotation and right now you have Gibson coming off colitis. Uh, you have, you know, Pineda suspended. They're going to have to go with some kind of a, a patchwork on Saturday in one of the biggest games of the year. And the lineup just doesn't have the day. Now, Cruz hinted last night, Thursday night, that he thinks they're going to get some of their guys back this weekend. You know, Sano, maybe Marwin Gonzalez, et cetera. So maybe they'll be a little more representative. But their strengths have been absolutely sapped. Well, there's no question about it. There's absolutely no question about it. And, you know, losing, losing Byron uh, it, for as many games as uh, they uh, lost him was, uh, and, and not just because he's done for the season, couldn't play in September. I mean, the, the whole year, um, once again, he hasn't, he hasn't played a full season. And when you look at the, the numbers, and I don't know what they are, but the, the numbers, the winning percentage with him in the lineup versus him not in the lineup is stark. And uh, whether or not he's hitting 300 and and um, and driving in every running looks like he looks at, the Twins are a you know well over 600 ball club when he's when he's in the in the lineup, and that that was a uh, that was a big blow. There's no no question about it. Losing Kepler at, at an important uh, part as well of the season as well as he was swinging the bat is a big deal. Not having Marwin Gonzalez for the you know the flexibility. 
that uh, that he brings uh, in the outfield and infield. Uh, that's a that's a big deal. I mean, it's been a big part of their their season all all uh, all season long. Big part of their lineup and their ability to win games all season long. So, you know, every team goes through it. Cleveland can make a pretty strong case for how they've been um, they've been decimated. Uh, as well, so we're not going to we're not going to hang our head and say you know woe is me about anything. We're just we're just saying down the stretch here for the Twins to win, you know they've got to they've got to get the guys that they do still have uh, around uh, it, it, healthy and and playing. I mean that's the way that's the way they're going to do it. It's going to be difficult for them to close it out uh, without the the regulars that they have that are still that are still able to play. We have some Twitter questions that are on point. Let's get to those. Do want to thank Barry Coffee, BarryCoffee.com. As I said, I'm drinking the uh, Bull Run blend right now. I've really started to love the uh, the Barry Coffee uh, Bull Run French Roast. It's fantastic. Uh, it's kind of becoming my favorite at this point. And the thing is, we we highly recommend Roy and I. We both drink Barry Coffee blends every day. That's what we recommend. But you can get whatever you want through Barry Coffee, and you'll be working with a local organization that is incredibly responsive and nice to deal with. Uh, they make everything really easy. You know, I just call them. They Once I set up my account, which took about two minutes, I call them, I put in an order, and they, they make sure that they get the freshest roasted coffee and they get it to your house quickly. And they won't ship it to you unless they can get the fresh stuff. This is not something that's been sitting on a shelf in a supermarket for eight weeks. They will send you stuff right out of the roaster, and you can tell the difference. Uh, you know, I I was really never that big a coffee snob until now because you know I would just go to the the big big market uh, you know store and, or go through the drive through, and it was all it was all fine. But now I taste the difference. So go to BerryCoffee.com. You can get Berry Coffee, Caribou, Dunn Brothers, Peace, Starbucks, City Kid Java, Seattle's Best. You know, get whatever you like, but we do recommend trying the berry coffee, one of their berry coffee blends at some point, just to see if you can taste the difference. I taste the difference. Berry coffee, berrycoffee.com. Uh, so I had a pretty good Twitter question here. First of all, uh, I asked for Twitter questions, and Nick Mancuso just sent me a gif of SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants uh, in a burning building trying to breathe. And, and, you know, I think that's on point because Roy is a big SpongeBob guy. <laughs> when I you know, think SpongeBob I, SquarePants, I think Roy Smalley. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Um, I uh, I really kind of miss that. My kids were uh, were too young, uh, but now and so I didn't have to uh, take a stance about SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, but now I do because I've got grandchildren that uh, that really do like it, and so uh, yeah, you can equate me with SpongeBob now if you want. SpongeBob's not bad. I will say that I feel I feel lucky. <laughs> it's a that, great GIF. Yes, it's a it great is. Great GIF. He said, "I do. I love. I love that." It's a, you know, in the middle of a, a house of fire, uh, trying to put it out by blowing on it. That's pretty yes. good. I will say I, I feel very fortunate in that when I was young, I got to watch you know the the Bugs Bunny, uh, the Road Runner, you know all the kind of the classic old school cartoons, Tom and Jerry, that were actually yep. really pretty well done. And then when my yep. kids were young, I had the great run of Pixar. And and Disney movies and everything, you know, the, the Toy Stories and the, I was really lucky because I got stuff that an adult could actually watch. Then, as I was getting to be a little bit older parent, one of my kids uh, fell in love with the uh, the Pokemon stuff, and that almost that made my eyes bleed. I actually took yeah. my son <laughs> to a Pokemon movie once, and I it's like the only thing I've ever gone into. I could not sit through it. I wanted to yeah, throw I'm up the entire time. I miss that. I'm so happy I missed that. Yeah, you nailed it. Uh, see, MJ asks, can they go sign Ron Davis? Just kidding. Uh, yes, that is. <laughs> she is just kidding. Uh, let's see. I know we had a good one. I wanted to get here. Okay, here's here's the on-point Twitter question from Sam Nord. What would be worse, missing the playoffs or getting swept in the divisional round and extending the playoff win drought to 0-16? I'll let you answer that, Roy. Um, missing the playoffs would be worse. Uh, the, the worst possible uh, thing uh, between it, 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 clearly worse than the other two. I just, you know, I understand all the angst about, you know, not winning in, in the, uh, the first round of the playoffs and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, I get it. 
but when you leave spring training, you're trying to, you're trying to win the, your division. That's what you're trying to do. They put themselves in a position to win it. Uh, and the postseason is the postseason. And, and I don't, I, 